What are you looking at? Oh no, sorry, I'm trying to get this to start recording. I'm like, I can show you my coffee cup closer. We are excited to be kicking off um, 2019 with a new YouTube series. Uh, we'll be calling that The Last Word, named after Ellery Adams's Right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, couldn't think of a better author to kick off this series with. So we'll be interviewing, oh, I'll be interviewing Jessica and Ellery um, on all things publishing and giving an agent's perspective and an author's perspective at the same time. Um, they'll be just as fun, don't worry, where Ellery is just as fun <laughs> as Jessica and I. Um, but before we get started, we figured you should get to know our guest. So Ellery Adams has been a bookends client for more than 15 years and is the author of over 30 mystery novels. Um, she'll be joining us once a month to discuss all stages of writing and of an author's career. Today, though, we'll be discussing her career and her writing on the road to Ellery Adams. We're going to put uh. some... <laughs> <laughs> do we need music? No, you know the Instagram thing where it's like the little heart. Oh, that's what we're gonna do. Oh uh, yeah, I like that. I'm excited. <laughs> we'll just hold up coffee cups. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so first question, Ellery. You've been a bookends client for a long time, but we'd like to go back to ask about your experience in the query trenches and how it led you to sign with Just Then Bookends. Well, the query trenches were depressing. I won't <laughs> lie. Um, you know, I got really tough during the query trenches phase it was like you know every week the mailbox would have a bit of mustard gas in it and I'd open it up bleh, and I'd feel super depressed and I don't know it's amazing I did not become an alcoholic during the query <laughs> period because this was like back 15 years ago so it wasn't the instant email rejection it was the slow wait for the mailman the mailman must have thought I had like salivation issues because I'd be out there like ah, what you got for me <laughs> You know, then I would judge things by the thickness of the envelope, which is ridiculous because it wasn't a college application. <laughs> it was going to be one letter. And then if the letter had ink on it, handwriting, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I got to a human being. <laughs> they, they read my stuff and they said something. And sometimes the things they said weren't very nice. So the information wasn't there like it is now. Like you were relying on books that were old it, like a lot of agencies didn't even have websites yeah there was no agentquery.net or anything like that it was the buying the book on literary agents and sometimes those literary agents weren't even at that job anymore so i don't even know who was reading the letter yeah right so and then you know a couple of people started writing longer notes and i felt like i was getting warmer and then make some more changes and start all over again. But it was about a year of querying before I kind of had two bites, one from Jessica and one from one of these big polished, what I would imagine in my mind would have like a marble atrium agency in New York City. So I think you know who I went with. <laughs> So um, as we go, we'll be talking more in depth about revisions, brainstorming new ideas, submitting your book, overcoming rejection, all that fun stuff. Um, but Jessica always says there's no straight line to publishing. It's always a winding path. So can you give us a little information about your career path and how you went from query trenches to Ellery Adams? Yeah, well, I think I talk to new writers all the time about building a writing resume. And I really started building a writing resume when I was still in elementary school. And I wrote stories for kids on the school bus and I sold them for a quarter. Because <laughs> even back then I was like, art should not be free. And then I wrote in high school and I wrote in college and I wrote for newspapers, like silly feature articles on bake sales at the library and stuff like that. But, and I think that writers out there will understand this, the joy of seeing your name in print in anything from a school paper to the little local free paper, you never get tired of it. And as a matter of fact, it becomes an obsession for a lot of writers. And for me, I was like, I wanna see my name in more stuff, more magazines, maybe even a book. And that's kind of what started this whole thing is, is I had always wanted to do this. And I'm sure you guys out there have done other things. You've tried other genres, you've, written for school stuff, you've written for local stuff, and you wanna 
make it bigger and you can definitely do it. Keep practicing with those little steps. And that's what I did. And I gained confidence that way. I think that's true that, you know, writers have a dream to write something, but sometimes you just have to write anything and everything. Right. And you hone, you know, on the surface, newspaper writing doesn't seem anything like novel writing, but it's writing and you do hone your style and your voice and everything as you're doing any sort of writing. Right. And you learn to work with an editor and you learn where your grammar is severely <laughs> missing in certain areas. You learn a lot about commas when you're submitting newspaper articles. And, you know, I didn't write on anything interesting, but I, I didn't even really care. I just wanted the practice of it. Yeah. You know, at the time, I still thought that I was going to be some world famous poet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can see how well that worked out. So as we go, we'll be talking about all different topics, as we said, and Ellie will be pulling on her career from unpublished author to first series to current secret book in school and society. But we got to do the lightning round that they do on every daytime talk show known to man. Oh my gosh. All right. So number one, what's your favorite book you've written? Written? Lightning um... round. <laughs> Sorry, I'd have to say it was the last one, the, the Whispered Word. I loved that one. Which characters of yours is most like you? Oh, gosh. All the crazy ones. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite mystery book you've not written? Oh, that, that's mean. Uh, I'm going to go with the Moonstone Wilkie Collins. Old school. Plot or a pantser? Oh, total pantser, always. Morning writer or night? Morning. Coffee or tea? Both in huge, huge quantities. <laughs> One in each hand. Oh, yeah. Uh, music or no music when you write? It depends. I will do music when I'm editing. I don't usually do music for fresh content because it interferes. But it helps me edit anything that helps me edit because I hate editing. Uh, favorite book outside of your genre? Wow, these are like lightning questions. These are impossible. I have like 10. Um, I have a favorite author. His name is Mika Waltari. He's Finnish. So, yeah, go with that one. Do with that one, you will. Favorite place to write? Uh, my office. <laughs> favorite vacation spot? Any place where there's a beach. And best memory with Jessica? Oh, that oh one. my gosh. That's a ton. Actually, Jessica and I have this thing about Mondays where she is able to turn any crappy Monday into like Super Monday. So I swear, like 15 years we've been together, almost every time she has good news for me, she calls me on a Monday. And I'm like, Mondays now rule! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that is Ellery Adams and she'll be picking up with us. We'll actually be posting another video this week, so stay tuned. And then she'll be joining us once a month on the last one. Perfect. Peace out.